the sugar is incredibly dangerous. Dr. Yatkin, in his book, he claimed it should be banned. It is so dangerous. It gets the blood sugar level up very high, very fast. And because of that, a lot of insulin is released to get the blood sugar level down again. But now it goes too low. But what does the person do down there? Have more sugar to get it up again. And what the pancreas can't handle is this up, down, up, down. And so pancreas start to wear out. There's a big contributing factor to diabetes. Two organs are dramatically affected by sugar. One is the pancreas and the other is the brain because the brain can only hold a two minute supply of fuel. So when it drops down here, it only takes two minutes and the brain's not working well. I'm not referring to honey, maple syrup, the, the natural or the coconut sugars. I'm referring to the pure crystallized acid that's been extracted from the sugarcane plant. I thank God that there are many alternatives, but if someone has diabetes, they can't even take those natural sugars until the pancreas is strong. Hybridized wheat. In the 1950s, wheat went through the hybridization process. What the scientists wanted, they wanted to create a plant with a high yield of grain to help with the starvation crisis. And they did. Remember, wheat used to grow that high. Most people don't even, today don't even know that. Your pancreas is key to keeping your body in balance. But did you know that the food you are eating could be silently wreaking havoc on it? From breakfast to dinner, you might be just munching on a snack that may end up giving you diabetes or some more serious health issue. Barbara O'Neill reveals a list of seven seemingly innocent foods that are silently damaging your pancreas beyond repair. Is your favorite snack on this list? Watch this video till the end to find out. Before we move on to the list of those seven foods, we should first have a look at the pancreas and how it works. Well, the pancreas has a bigger role to play when it comes to digestion. It is found in the abdomen behind the stomach. Its size is that of your hand. During digestion, it releases pancreatic juices called enzymes, which help in the breakdown of fats, sugars, and starches. The pancreas also aids in digestion by producing hormones. They are also called chemical messengers, which travel with your blood. Pancreatic hormones are responsible for keeping your blood sugar levels balanced and regulating your appetite. Moreover, they activate stomach acids and signal your stomach to empty. Every day, your pancreas releases eight ounces of digestive juices with enzymes, including lipase, protease, and amylase. The enzyme lipase works alongside bile to break down fat. If your pancreas doesn't have enough of it, your body might struggle with fat absorption and the uptake of vital fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Protease, on the flip side, decomposes protein in your diet. It does more than just decomposition. It also helps safeguard you from germs like bacteria and yeast present in your intestines. Amylase splits starches into sugars, which your body uses in energy production. In case of amylase deficiency, you may develop diarrhea from unabsorbed carbohydrates. Hormones are produced by a group of cells inside your pancreas. These hormones then go to the blood and share messages throughout every part of your digestive system. They include insulin, glucagon, gastrin, and amylin. Insulin is produced by beta cells, which make up around 75% of the pancreas's hormone-producing cells. It helps your body produce energy using sugar. Its deficiency can increase blood sugar levels and ultimately cause diabetes. The second hormone, glucagon, helps cope with low blood sugar levels by sending messages to the liver, asking it to release the stored sugar. Meanwhile, gastrin triggers the production of gastric acid in the stomach, and amylin helps regulate appetite and stomach emptying. The most common pancreatic issues are diabetes, pancreatitis, and pancreatic cancer. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, 400 years BC, no mention of diabetes in his writings. So diabetes is a fairly modern disease. Diabetes is a lifestyle disease. Newton's third law of motion states that to every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. Let's now dive into those seven destructive foods ruining your pancreas without you knowing. Modern wheat. Let's begin the video with the first common staple food, wheat or modern wheat. The pancreas keeps the blood sugar at the desired level through insulin and glucagon. It happens only when we have a balanced diet consisting of fibers, proteins, 
and healthy fats, which lets the glucose into the bloodstream slowly. This, in turn, gets the pancreas to release insulin in small amounts and at suitable gaps, ideal for overall body health. But nowadays, people are consuming a great deal of carbohydrates, including wheat products, which are triggering high blood sugar levels and pushing the pancreas to release insulin quickly and in great amounts. One of its main roles is to release two hormones. One is insulin, that gets the blood sugar down. The other hormone is glucagon, and that gets the blood sugar level up. Now, the meal that you had tonight, because it's high in fiber, I think everything had fiber, generous proteins, there's your legumes and some great fats, it gives a slow, sure, steady release of glucose, of nutrients. And that allows the pancreas to just release the insulin as it's needed. The wheat that was used centuries ago was very different from what we use today. Thousands of years back, there was einkorn or farrow wheat, which was a simple grain with just one kernel per spikelet. But now, all we see is modern wheat around us. It is genetically modified to double its yield and boost its resistance against diseases. This new and modern wheat has been given the name Frankenwheat. This is used almost everywhere in pasta, bread, and baked goods. 50 years ago, selective crossbreeding gave rise to shorter, stockier wheat loaded with seeds. According to researchers, this modern wheat is causing people to develop celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. In 50s, wheat went through intensive crossbreeding. And the reason they put it through intensive crossbreeding is they wanted to create a plant with a high yield of grain so that that would help with the starvation crisis in Africa, in Mexico, in India. And eventually, Dr. Norman Boulag got a Nobel Prize for his hybridized wheat. At first, the stalk broke before the grain was fully ripe because wheat used to grow that high. Do you remember that? <laughs> we had a 25-year-old wheat farmer come to our retreat. He'd never heard of such a thing. He didn't know that wheat used to grow that high. And so they went back to the drawing board and they came up with a wheat that only grows this high. In 2010, Plant Research International in the Netherlands did a research study that showed modern wheat contains way more gluten proteins than the wheat we had centuries ago. This is causing celiac disease. This study also found that this type of wheat and the gluten inside it is giving rise to gluten-related health issues. On top of that, it also contains a type of starch called amylopectin A, which is perfect for baking purposes, but it causes blood sugar spikes as well as abdominal fat gain. Amylopectin B is found in bananas and potatoes, which raise blood sugar but not as quickly as the wheat. Meanwhile, beans, lentils, and chickpeas have amylopectin C, which maintains blood sugar levels and is therefore considered healthy for your body. Created is called amylopectin A. And amylopectin A is the name of the starch that was produced. So let's look at what it does. <clears throat> we'll do it up here. It gets the blood sugar level up very high, very fast. So then you get a corresponding dump. So that's the A. So let me give you something to compare it to, amylopectin B. Amylopectin B is found in bananas and potatoes. And if you're familiar with the glycemic index of food, bananas and potatoes, they're high on the glycemic index. So they get the blood sugar level up relatively high, relatively fast. Not as high and not as fast, so it's more like that. So that's your B. Amylopectin C is found in all your beans. There's your lentils, chickpeas, lima beans, cannelloni beans, kidney beans. So what does the C do? The C gives a lovely steady rise, maintenance, lovely steady drop. That's what every cell in the body wants. Barbara O'Neill thinks frankenwheat is the root cause of increasing type 2 diabetes. Dr. William Davis, who wrote the book Wheat Belly, says amylopectin A in wheat more easily and quickly turns into sugar than table sugar itself. Even if you eat just two slices of wheat toast, 
it will raise your blood sugar levels more than a chocolate bar. What's even more shocking is that modern wheat contains polypeptides, also called gluteomorphins, which trigger feelings of pleasure in your brain and give rise to an opiate-like effect. So whenever you eat wheat-based foods, you instantly feel pleasure and end up craving more wheat products. This is why you can't stop yourself from having more than one biscuit. Barbara O'Neill strongly recommends that wheat should be cut down from your diet at all costs and should be replaced with whole grains if you want to protect yourself from any type of diabetes or avoid getting your pancreas damaged. Refined sugar. Refined sugar is second on our list and it might be doing more damage to our bodies than we think. When we consume complex carbohydrates, they break down into glucose in our digestive system. This glucose then enters the blood and travels to the liver. The liver then sends it to our body cells with the help of the pancreatic hormone insulin. It works like a key to open the cells and push the glucose inside them. Stop is refined sugar. Now, if someone's, if someone's looking at conquering diabetes, initially they also need to eliminate all your healthy sugars, like your, your palm sugar, your uh, maple syrup, and honey. So they need to be stopped until the blood, until the pancreas is starting to, to recover. Once it enters the cells, two types of energy production occur, the aerobic pathway and the anaerobic pathway. The aerobic pathway needs oxygen to produce energy and releases 36 units of energy, while the anaerobic pathway doesn't need oxygen and thus only releases two units of energy. Barbara O'Neill says when we consume a lot of sugar, especially pure crystallized one, our blood sugar levels rise uncontrollably. Our pancreas releases insulin in case of high sugar and glucagon when our blood sugar is low. High blood sugars push it to release more insulin to maintain the blood sugar levels. However, this can trigger a cycle that leads to more severe conditions, which goes like this. High sugar consumption leads to high blood sugar, which triggers more insulin production, resulting in low blood sugar levels called hypoglycemia. As a response, the brain sends a message to the pancreas to release glucagon to raise blood sugar levels. This on and off release of both hormones leads to a condition called insulin resistance. Finally, the body cells stop responding to insulin and glucose remains outside in the blood, causing unbelievably high blood sugar levels. Plus, the pancreas gets worn out from constant hormonal release and struggles to control blood sugar levels. White bread. To prove that white bread is more dangerous for you than sugar itself, let's discuss the glycemic index, GI. It is a value used to determine how much a specific food can raise blood sugar levels. Now the glycemic index is a very important index for diabetics because the glycemic index is an index or a reading on how quickly the glucose in that food is released into the blood. Foods can be divided into three GI categories, low, medium, and high. They are also ranked using a scale of zero to 100. A low glycemic index is 55 or lower. A medium glycemic index is between 56, 69, and a high glycemic index is 70 or more than that. Foods with high carbohydrates or sugars are often digested quickly and have a high glycemic index. However, foods with protein, fiber, and fats have lower glycemic indexes. According to Barbara O'Neill, sugars, in general, have a glycemic index of 59. But white bread has a glycemic index of 69. Do you know what's more shocking? Whole wheat bread has an even higher GI than white bread. It is 72, surpassing even the sugar's GI. Besides, white bread is made from refined wheat and has added sugar content, which makes it a bad choice for a healthy diet. This added sugar is the reason why it has a greater glycemic index than the sugar itself. The, the wheat started to go worldwide. So by the 1990s, every bread, cereal, pasta, cake, etc., pizza, all made out of this hybridized wheat. It was rushed through with no safety studies. They didn't think they had to do safety studies. On it summarizes that regardless of the type of wheat bread, it has the capability of increasing your blood sugar levels more than the sugar itself. It is best for people struggling with diabetes or managing their blood sugar levels to avoid such products completely. Juiced was a type of such starch structure that gets the blood sugar level up higher than even sugar. White pasta. 
Next on our deadly food list is white pasta. Similar to white bread, this pasta is also made from refined wheat. Both white pasta and bread lose almost all of their nutrients and fiber during their manufacturing. And according to research, consuming these refined products directly increases the risk of type 2 diabetes and obesity. White pasta is loaded with empty calories and offers little to no nutrition. It is the process of refinement that takes away all the nutrients and leaves sugar and calories in these products, leading to high blood sugar, weight gain, and several other health issues. Unfortunately, many countries have adopted an unhealthy lifestyle in which their meals have a large part of carbohydrates, like white flour, white bread, pasta, sodas, and sweets. Once the wheat grains are refined, they lose 50% fats, 50% calcium, 80% iron, a lot of fiber, 50 to 80% B vitamins, almost all vitamin E, 70% phosphorus, and 98% magnesium. Is people predominantly are eating a high carbohydrate diet. And this high carbohydrate diet releases a lot of glucose. And that glucose, when it gets into the blood, especially the refined sugar, and by the way, the refined grains, it's almost as high as sugar. But there is one grain that gets the blood sugar levels higher than refined sugar, is that a surprise? And the grain that does that is what? Bread and cereal and pasta and cakes, etc., and pizza are all made out of predominantly one grain. What's that one grain? So it's more like we are munching on empty calories when we have this type of snack. Cakes and pastries. On number five, we have bakery goods, which aren't really good, cakes and pastries. These two or any other baked goods have more carbohydrates and sugars than any other processed foods. Different processed foods undergo different types of processing, such as mechanical and chemical. Mechanical processing involves beef grinding, vegetable heating, or pasteurizing foods. This doesn't make your foods unhealthy. So if the process doesn't involve the addition of ingredients or the use of chemicals, it will not make your food harmful. Chemical one, on the other hand, involves the use of artificial ingredients and refined products, leaving the food with no nutritional value. These products also contain artificial colors, flavors, and sweeteners in goods like cakes, pastries, donuts, cream rolls, and more. Undoubtedly, they taste good, and once we taste them, we crave them even more. However, the ingredients used in these processed foods, such as refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, salt, and saturated fats are entirely harmful to your health. We already know how refined sugar is worse for your pancreatic health. The second ingredient is refined carbohydrates. Our bodies need carbohydrates, and we can consume them daily, but there is a big difference between refined and unrefined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates don't have the said nutrients anymore, plus they will only raise your blood sugar levels. Coming to fats, the croissant you consume has butter, which has saturated fats. Sadly, it doesn't only affect your cholesterol levels and cause heart disease, but also has a link with type 2 diabetes. It isn't just your croissants that have saturated fats. The processed pastries also carry the same ingredient. So your cake, donuts, biscuits, and everything else in the bakery aisle are harmful to your health. Caffeine. On number six, we have none other than your usual caffeine. Research shows that it can raise your blood sugar levels by affecting the production of insulin in your body. Caffeine can lower insulin sensitivity. This means your cells become unresponsive to this hormone and don't let in the glucose. Therefore, after you have had a drink or eaten something, the sugar in your blood will stay right there. This triggers the production of insulin in your pancreas, eventually overworking them. As a result, after every meal, your blood sugar levels are at a peak. Oh. No refined sugar and no caffeine. Caffeine can actually get an insulin response, so that has to be stopped. When he came to our retreat, he ate only low glycemic foods, he had legumes every meal. He started to drink more water. And if you already have type 2 diabetes, then caffeine should be the last beverage you should be relying on. It's because your body already isn't using the insulin as it should be. Now, after you have your meals, your blood sugar levels begin to rise and reach the point where it becomes difficult to bring them down. 
This might result in more serious complications, like nerve damage or heart disease. According to another research, scientists have discovered that caffeine activates the release of certain stress hormones like epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. Epinephrine, the fight-or-flight hormone, can trigger high levels of blood sugar after breaking down the glycogen, stored glucose, in your liver or muscles. It stops the cells from using the sugar in cells during energy production. This hormone may also block the production of insulin. Another hormone, cortisol, is also released from it, which may lead to insulin resistance, ultimately causing high blood sugar levels. Therefore, overall, caffeine consumption is dangerous in many ways and should be eliminated from your diet. Barbara O'Neill has real-life stories that prove that cutting down on some toxic food products, such as those on this list, alongside caffeine, helps safeguard against diabetes and keeps your pancreas from overworking. Deep Fried Foods Last but not least, number seven, deep fried foods. Restaurants and fast food chains use deep frying methods to cook food quickly and inexpensively. Many people who are really into junk foods like french fries, chicken strips, fish, cheese sticks, or others end up consuming them on a daily basis. While these fried foods taste and look heavenly, they actually do more harm than good to your body. They are high in calories and contain trans fats, which can pose serious risks to your overall health. Killer fats are your altered fats. There's your deep fried foods, there's your margarines, those fats that have been changed or altered, or your polyunsaturated fats that have been extracted using high heat. They're the dangerous fats. Generally, these food items are wrapped in a flour coating before being fried. When they are fried, they lose all moisture content and absorb fats, which, in turn, increases their calorie content. If we compare a 138-gram baked potato with 138 grams of french fries, the baked potato has 128 calories and 0.18 g of fat, while french fries have 431 calories and 20 g of fat. So. It proves that fried items carry way more calories and fats than non-fried items. When unsaturated fats undergo hydrogenation, trans fats are produced. Food manufacturers use this method, using high pressure and hydrogen gas, to raise the shelf life of foods. However, this also happens during the frying process, when the oil reaches the highest temperatures. This alters the chemical structure of fats and turns them into complex molecules that don't break down easily in our bodies, leading to various health issues. These fats don't only increase the risk of heart disease and cancer, but also cause diabetes and obesity. Many studies show that fried food items can give you type 2 diabetes. A 2005 research study found that people who consumed such food more than two times per week were twice as much at risk of insulin resistance than those who ate them less than one time a week. Barbara O'Neill suggests that deep-fried foods should be avoided if people aim to live healthy lives free from all kinds of diseases. What should we eat instead? Barbara O'Neill shared the stories of two people who had type 1 diabetes, and they were told that they couldn't get rid of it. However, after they made changes to their diets and followed a healthy lifestyle, they were miraculously free from diabetes. If diet can change the fate of diabetics, it can surely save one from developing diabetes. We do. To conquer diabetes, go for the low glycemic index foods. It's not easy. To, I mean, it's, not, it's easy. I meant to say it's not hard to get a glycemic index. You can, you can Google that. It's a matter of having uh, berries for breakfast instead of banana. It's, a, it's as simple as having a sweet potato instead of potato. O'Neill suggests that we should go for low glycemic index foods. For instance, you can eat berries instead of bananas and sweet potatoes in place of regular potatoes. Whatever you eat, be sure to cut down on wheat and focus on whole grains only. All your berries, all your berries sit at about 26. Grapefruit, it sits at uh, 25. So for the diabetic, these, these are good fruits <laughs> because they're low GI. They're a lovely, slower delivery of fuel. Add legumes and beans to your daily routine. They are perfect for maintaining your blood sugar levels. Refined sugar and products made from white or refined wheat should be completely minimized. Go for whole foods, low carbs, and ancient grains like spelt and kamut. O'Neill recommends a natural sweetener, stevia, 
to anyone who cannot resist having sweets during or after meals. It doesn't cause an insulin response, but she asks to keep its quantity lower to avoid experiencing the bitter aftertaste. Besides, it is best to avoid sweeteners completely. According to a report, people who cut down on high-carb foods automatically reduced their cravings for sugar. This means the more sugar you consume, the more you want to have it. That's it for today's video. Did you find your usual snack on this list? Comment down your answers below in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.